Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about acrylic vinyl storage racks. New fabric that I've added to my stash from Ruby Star Society. The book review will be for a book called Step by Step Texture Quilting. I'll be demonstrating how to use slap bands or Hugo's magic tape to store your cork or vinyl and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thanks so much for joining me for the show. Danny's getting uh, all the comments queued up to put on the screen for me. Um, Deborah's watching from North Carolina. Michelle is watching from Australia. Tamara's watching from Chicago and Kathleen's watching from Wisconsin. So, so welcome everyone to Social Sunday. Just a friendly reminder before I get started, Nearly everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So. Earlier today, I was thinking about nearly six years of live shows and all of the tools and notions and things that I've talked about on Social Sunday in the past. So I put um, a poll or a vote in the Facebook group earlier today in case you are on Facebook um, in, and you would like to vote. Uh, so my question that I posed to the group was, um, what or what tool or product that I've talked about during Social Sunday is your favorite or the one that you've used the most? So I was just asking purely out of curiosity, but um, I was wondering which things that we've talked about on the show are things that you're using constantly in your sewing room. So if you do use Facebook and you'd like to vote in that poll, uh, the link is in the description and um, I saw a lot of comments about things um, like wonder clips, uh, Dritz wash away wonder tapes. So um, be sure to vote in that poll if you're interested in doing so. The notion of the week this week is from an email that I got from Jeanette last week. She showed me a picture of this really cool acrylic storage rack that she got for storing her cork and vinyl. So of course I picked one up as well. I just got it. So I put it together before the show. Um, it, it does come it does arrive flat so you need a little bit of assembly you'll need a phillips head screwdriver but very easy there weren't even any instructions it was that easy so um, this is what it looks like it holds uh, 20 pieces of rolled cork or vinyl um, i had to roll i had to start my rolls kind of um, on the thinner side just because the openings are only so large but i did get uh, this orange piece on the bottom is um, an 18 by 54 inch uh, piece of cork. So it does fit um, a good amount, uh, like I said, 20 holes. And all I needed to assemble were these uh, pegs, these four pegs, I just screwed them in um, on either side. So super simple to put together. Um, this is great to put on your tabletop to keep everything rolled and stored nicely. And um, I'm going to share with you later on in the show how I held these rolls in place. But Danny's gonna switch over to the overhead camera super quick. Um, just so I can show you, let me pull these out of here real, really fast. Just a close up view in case you're curious. It's just frosted acrylic, um, nice and sturdy. Um, I don't know, not super, not a whole lot to this, but um, very helpful for keeping things organized so you d don't have rolls all over the place or um, taking up extra space on your desk. So again, if you're interested in this, uh, the link is in the description and this is the um, acrylic storage rack for uh, cork or vinyl. Let's put this to the side. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. How do you normally store your cork or vinyl? Um, for sure, I always like to keep mine rolled, but through the years I've had different uh, storage solutions. In our old house, I had um, something that went over the door and had sort of like a basket where I kept all the rolls inside. Trudy says a wine rack works for storage. That's a great idea, super great idea. Thank you for recommending that in the comments, Trudy. Um, definitely a good idea not to keep it folded, keep it nice and neat and rolled. So um, 
I also linked to this new t-shirt that I got. I was, I search on Etsy from time to time for, I wear a lot of t-shirts. So I like things from uh, t-shirts of TV shows that I like to watch, t-shirts with animals on them, of course, sewing themed t-shirts. So I thought you might get, get a kick out of uh, this t-shirt that I'm wearing tonight. If you see a seam ripper, now is not a good time. So. <laughs> I, th I really love the saying on this shirt. Um, uh, I, from memory, it comes in different colors. Again, I got it in, on Etsy. They have a lot of other t-shirts as well besides just sewing themed. I picked up uh, a couple others from the same shop. So um, I'm sure I'll be wearing this on the show a lot uh, for future social Sunday shows. Uh, new fabric that I've added to my stash this week is a fabric line from Ruby Star Society. Um, this one's designed by Melody Miller and uh, she always has really fun retro themed fabric. So Danny's going to switch back uh, to the overhead camera so that I can share them with you. I didn't pick up the whole entire fabric line, but just as you can see the larger prints. So let me open some of these up. So. Most of these have a little hint of metallic in them. So these stars are sort of almost rose gold, coppery metallic prints over here. Um, I picked up most of the floral prints from the fabric line. This one I liked as well. It has, um, I guess these are probably oranges possibly with some butterflies. I also picked up this panel print. I'll save the panel print till the end so I can show that on the front camera because I'm going to try to open that one up. Um, this one's another of the same print that I just shared but in a different colorway. I really like the cream background on this one. And then this last one is a canvas fabric and let me open this one up a little as well. So it's got sort of a pinkish uh, background fabric. Um, again, the little stars are metallic. And then Danny's going to switch to the, the front camera. So I, I'm going to try to hold up this panel the best that I can. So I really like panel prints because um, depending on the size, they're really good for pouches. Let me see. I might have to stand up for this one. I'll try to share. Oops. I'll try to share as much of the prints as I can. Oh, and that's upside down. So there's a, a lot to work from as far as uh, different designs. A lot of these designs are from Melody Miller's past fabric lines. Um, my favorite is probably, where's that typewriter? I always loved her typewriter prints. Um, let's see the Mustang print over here. That's another of my favorites. So just really great uh, designs over here. And um, I think if I were to use these, I'd probably just cut the straight up squares and just make simple zipper pouches because I feel like, um, I don't know, the designs are just so interesting that um, maybe let the designs shine. Um, at least that was my initial thought. Let me get situated back over here. So I had a question for you uh, because Melody's always so good at combining a few colors together. So I was wondering what um, favorite two colors do you like to pair together? So the reason that this particular fabric caught my eye is that I super love the, the blue and the really bright pink. Um, for some reason, blues and pinks always catch my eye first. Not to say that I always use those when I'm making bags, but definitely pink and blue. Um, love teal those colors. Blue. Danny says he enjoys teal and blue, so uh, close to mine, minus the pink. Um, let me know in the comments. No, pink is a great color. Um, it's part of the rainbow. So <laughs> uh, my book review for tonight is a quilt related book, but you could possibly incorporate some of these techniques into your bags, especially if, li if you like to quilt your bags. Um, the book is called Step-by-Step -Step Texture Quilting and Danny's gonna switch back to the overhead camera so that I can show you um, a few pages that I bookmarked from the book. So this book is contains instructions for free motion quilting and also quilting that you can use uh, with your walking foot especially the geometric designs and so the book has a lot of examples and instructions on how to complete different uh, motifs for 
uh, your machine quilting. So um, my favorite part of the book is all of the quilted examples. So the fabrics are quilted to the batting and all of the examples shown just give you some ideas. So the first few pages at the beginning of the book is just talking about um, different ideas you can use when quilting, such as echoing. I super love this. I don't know if it's the fabric choices combined with the quilting designs, but um, I can tell this was probably a fairly simple quilt, but the quilting really for sure makes it stand out. So I bookmarked a few things that jumped out at me. Some of them are um, instructions and some of them are just ideas. For example, this is ideas for foreground and background quilting with different um, sizes of quilting combined together. And this is the dense quilting right over here, um, pebbles. So here's an example of what the actual instruction portion of the book is comprised of um, the actual quilting on the fabric and then how to how to implement that design using illustrations in the book. Um, and the arrows show you where to start and then how to continue on. So fairly self-explanatory. And I think for a lot of these, you could just look at the illustrations and get the basic idea. So I just bookmarked a few of my favorites. Some of them are simpler, some like this one over here, more complex. And um, I do have, if you're interested, if you've never quilted fabric for a bag before, I do have a free video on my YouTube channel how to quilt fabric for a bag. Obviously, I don't go through lots of different designs like this, but just the basics, such as how to rough cut your fabric and interfacing slightly larger than your pieces so that um, you can account for any shrinkage that might be encountered. So um, this is a really great book with some really fantastic ideas. A lot of them I haven't seen before. Um, this is really, really eye-catching. I love the more detailed designs, but I feel like I'd need to start out with something simpler, but obviously those detailed designs are in the book as well. The mandala, this is my favorite in the whole entire book. Um, yeah, I just don't even know what to say. It's just that amazing. And in the back of the book is several pages, sort of an index of visuals of all the designs and what page number you can find them. So you can reference that in the back of the book um, without having to leaf through the whole entire thing every time. So the author, Christina Camelli, has several um, machine quilting and quilting books available. Um, I have another one of her earlier books, but this one um, got really high reviews online, so I definitely wanted to review this on the show. Again, it's called Step-by-Step -Step Texture Quilting, and there's a link in the description where you can find this book if you're interested. So I don't remember if it was last week or the week before on the show, um, there was some discussion about uh, storage for your cork or vinyl. And, oh, I did forget. Thank you, Danny. Uh, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers, before we get over to that, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. Danny and I, very much appreciate uh, that you watch our show and make time for it in your day, whether you're watching on Sunday or you're watching later on in the week. So um, thank you so very much. All right, now to the vinyl storage. So there was some discussion on the show um, recently about different items that you could implement to keep your cork or vinyl on the roll. And uh, I picked up two of the suggestions that I noticed. Uh, one was from Vanessa. And then the other second one I, had, I did not write down, but um, I'm going to share both of these with you and you can decide if either of them sounds like something that you'd be interested. So Danny's gonna switch over to the um, overhead camera. So slap bands, you might be familiar with these from the probably 90s. Um, they were just basically bracelets in different colors and designs that you slap on your wrists and they form uh, a bracelet. Uh, I picked up this particular set because they're actually sewing related. So these are from Kimber Bell and they're actually stabilizer slap bands. So they have the names of all the different, um, if you have an embroidery machine, all of the different uh, embroidery stabilizers. I'm not, not super well versed in all of the different embroidery stabilizers, but I did want to pick this up just because like I mentioned, it's sewing themed. And um, if you prefer just a generic plain slap band, that's okay too. So. 
I rolled this uh, piece of cork up before the show and I attached one of the slap bands on it. So uh, super easy. I, I guess I'd prefer not to slap it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, wind it around the cork. Keeps everything held nice in place. Um, this, so this is a good idea for holding the cork into a roll. And also someone mentioned Hugo's Amazing Tape. And I don't know how I missed this product because Shark Tank is one of my favorite shows. And uh, apparently this was seen on Shark Tank. So um, I, I guess I either forgot about it or it's hard to believe that I missed an episode. But anyway, this is the Hugo's Amazing Tape. And it's quite a substantial roll. This is what the roll looks like. Basically, it's tape that only sticks to itself. So I have one on this particular piece of cork and it's reusable, so you can use it a few times. It's basically a clear piece of, I'm not sure if it's vinyl or what it is, but basically you just cut it to the length that you want. And there were some instructions on the back of the packaging that I wanted to read. Um, it's washable, water resistant. I just mentioned it was reusable. Um, you can cut it to the length that you need and you just press it together. So I'm gonna cut a piece off over here it suggests measuring enough tape to wrap around your item at least one and a half times. Let's see. So you just kind of wrap it around and it sticks. I mean, super easy and obviously it can work for a lot of different products, uh, especially since it just sticks to itself. You're not getting adhesive on anything. So this is brilliant. I, I can imagine myself using this for other household things besides just uh, storing cork and vinyl. Um, if this particular piece gets dirty, you can just use uh, clear water to clean dust off of it or what have you and restore it so that it is uh, like brand new. So the first one that I shared is the Kimberbell slap bands and the second item is the Hugo's amazing tape and I've linked to both of those in the description in case you're interested in checking them out um, after the show. Um, yeah, this is, this is really awesome. Danny, can you think of other uses for uh, this amazing tape around the house and I'll have to think about that for a little while, but yeah Great for wrapping your cork or vinyl for sure Okay, so before we get over to Questions live questions. Um, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway But if you do have a question for me um, that you'd like me to answer live You can go ahead and type that question in the comments right now either on Facebook or YouTube wherever you watch the show um, and if you remember to, you can type a, a question mark before your question, or you can type it in capital letters. It just helps Danny more easily pick out the questions from among all of the comments. Before we get over to that, uh, the winner of last week's giveaway is Cindy Bassett. So congratulations to you, Cindy. Please email me after the show. Um, Danny's gonna put a nifty little graphic up on the screen since we have one now. Um, that's Sarah at SoSweetness.com. Uh, email me and I'll get you set up with your prize and congratulations again. All right, Danny, take it away with the questions. Um, Wendy wanted to know any concerns um, the vinyl will crack being rolled too tight. Um, let me pull this slap band off of this. I don't normally like to roll my cork super tight, but this one I did roll tight because like I said, uh, keeping it in the uh, opening. Um, let me turn it around. So this is the end that I started rolling. There we go. This is the end that I started rolling that I rolled really tight. Um, it does look a little bit wavy, but um, you can just go ahead and have that laid out flat or as you're sewing, there's no creases certainly on this piece. Um, me personally, I would probably just cut the piece to size attach it to my interfacing. Normally if I'm, for example, using foam interfacing, sew that in place and um, it should be fine. If you're concerned about this, however, um, you can heat up a small space on your ironing board with your iron. Immediately after heating up that space on your ironing board, you could take a piece of fabric, um, such as cork or vinyl, that you'd like to um, flatten out without ironing directly on top of it. And you can go ahead and just, Danny, can you switch to the, uh, overhead camera super quick. So pretend this is my ironing board. I've heated up a spot on the ironing board and then just take the area that you need to flatten out with your hands and kind of like rub it back and forth around like that. You might need to do it more than once, but um, that's a great way to get um, 
even a finished bag, um, if you've used cork or vinyl and you prefer not to actually press it, that's a great way to get things um, nice and smooth, um, whether it's the fabric before cutting or the finished bag. Um, obviously, if it's the finished bag instead of a flat piece of fabric, you'll just unzip the bag or whatever the closure is, put your hands inside, and then kind of uh, wax on, wax off, kind of more or less on top of your ironing board. Linda says, where do we get that tape from? I've actually linked to that um, uh, ama Hugo's amazing tape in the description. Um, so the link is there, so check that out. Sally says, I like old scrunchies. They are soft and don't mark the cork or vinyl. That's a fantastic idea. I'm sure a lot of people have old scrunchies uh, in their uh, bathrooms or bedrooms. Connie says, wrap around excess length of electrical cord, wrap around spools of thread, especially my heavy duty. Fantastic ideas, especially the electrical cord. Um, I think most people have uh, gobs or nests of electric cord all over the place. Or even um, if you have a little storage case for your electronics, like Connie mentioned, you can just cut a smaller piece of the tape rather than having the whole width. You could cut it into smaller sections um, and then wrap it around bunches of cords as well. Fantastic idea. Thank you. Kim says, I'm having ruler storage struggles. How do you store when you have so many and still access? I actually, maybe it was a couple years ago, I talked about, um, gosh, I can't even remember the name, uh, a wooden storage uh, device that I purchased to store my rulers. Um, feel free to email me after the show and I'm happy to get you a link to that particular show. I do have a lot of rulers also and I think Perhaps half of my rulers fit in that storage, so. Um, oh, thank you. I was like, why is that on the screen? Danny's thinking ahead. Uh, yeah, there's my email address. Linda says, do you roll up your vinyl inside, um, out, or in? That's a really great question. So actually when we ship the, the cork or vinyl, when customers purchase from us, we ship it with the design side on the inside just to, I guess, protect things in shipment. Um, I guess it's up to you if you prefer to have the color facing out or facing in. Obviously, it would be easier to see what you have in your stash if the color's facing out. Um, the cork that we sell is UV protected by the manufacturer, so I suppose there's no uh, real concern of the color changing over time, but um, whatever your preference, either any or Audi. <laughs> Lisa says, how do you consistently come up with such great tips and tricks? Um, I have to admit a lot of these are either comments on the show with suggestions um, a lot of times after the show, um, like with that acrylic vinyl storage rack that I talked about at the beginning of the show, that was an email from Jeanette. So um, a lot of times things are either commented on, emailed, on, emailed to me, um, I follow, I try my best to follow fabric and sewing shops on social media although I'm not always the best at keeping up with social media. Um, I sign up for a lot of newsletters for quilting and fabric shops just so I can see what the very latest is. So um, I try my best to have my finger on the pulse if I can. Um, Christina says, did you like the Buckle Guys metal teeth removal tool? I purchased it. I don't recall talking about it on the show, so it must still be in the queue. Um, but yeah, that's another one of the notions that's still waiting. I have in my notebook a huge list of uh, notions and I check them off as I talk talk about them on the show. So um, yeah, that must be on my list uh, to be decided. <laughs> Simone says, wow, I learned a lot on this show about tools that I have never seen. Thank you. I really appreciate that, Simone. Thank you so much. Laura says, I have a ruler rack from Rita's Racks. That's the one. I have the same one. I love it. I think Sarah showed it on the show once. Yeah, that's the name of the rack. Thank you so much, Laura, for that uh, quick thinking. Um, Isabella says, hi, Sarah. What is the bag behind you with Tim Holtz fabric? Um, this is the Stingray bag. This is the smaller size of the two, the handbag size. And there's also a bigger size, the tote bag size. Uh, both of the sizes are in the same pattern, though. Michelle says, I use Hugo's with my cones of polyester thread that never stay on the spool. That's a great idea. Fantastic idea. 
Do you have a video about how to use rulers to make sure to quilt uh, make sure to quilt pieces are straight. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you're talking about uh, geometric quilting, if you're just quilting, say, straight lines or diamonds, um, I did, in my demonstration, how to quilt fabric for a bag, I did do diamonds in that particular video. So if that's what you're looking for, um, you can find that on my YouTube channel. And I basically, I used Clover Chaco, uh, which is what this is right here, to mark my quilting lines, I marked half at a time just so the chalk wouldn't brush away before I got to it. But um, yeah, Clover Chaco is great for a lot of different things. Terry says, do you use an add a quarter ruler when you foundation paper piece? I have to admit, I do have an, an add a quarter ruler. Um, my friend, actually Vanessa from Crafty Gemini showed me how to use that. And for whatever reason, I like to just, uh, quickly use my scissors to trim my seam allowances. I know it would be more accurate if I used the ruler, um, but I think I just need more practice using it. I haven't used it a whole lot, to be honest. Tony says, I found stick-on hooks on Amazon that I hang my rulers on. Oh, maybe those are command hooks. That's a great idea too. Deb says, I use command strips on the side of a bookcase to store rulers. Most of them have holes to hang. That's a great idea too, especially, I call it dead space, like some areas of a room I would consider dead space uh, maybe above a desk. Um, the side of a bookcase, definitely dead space. Basically, an area of a room where you can potentially fill it with storage for something else. Um, Cindy says, I hang my rulers on my pegboard too. Fantastic idea um, if you've got space for a pegboard. I wish I had more wall a lot space. Of said about pegboards. Oh, Danny's saying a lot of people mention pegboards. I wish I had more wall space in here, but this particular room has a bunch of windows. so. There's only a limited amount of space. I would love to have a pegboard in here. I would also love to have a um, like design wall, like a, a piece of flannel where I could um, attach quilt blocks to while I'm assembling the quilt and laying everything out. But um, unfortunately, no room in this particular uh, space for that. Amy says, what color is that cord called on the website? Um, I'll hold up the two pieces that I was showing. This one is coral, which is sort of a slightly pinky orange color. The other one I had for the demonstration, this one's navy. Jamie says, is it possible to piece scraps of cork together for a quilt block bag feature? Scrap. That is a great idea. Um, I'm gonna write that down. Cord quilt block. I have seen recently, I don't remember who made it, but I saw a Polaris bag that someone made with sort of color blocked, I think it was vinyl, but the same would work for cork as well. That would look really awesome, especially incorporating different pieces um, in the same uh, bag. Colette says, what does your shirt say? Oh, Danny's gonna put uh, the comments away for just a second. My shirt says, if you see a seam ripper, now is not a good time. Yeah, it's never a good time when that seam ripper comes out. <laughs> All right, Danny, you wanna swap for another oh, comment? Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, Sally says, I live in the desert in Arizona. I'm fairly new to bag making. Do you have to worry or protect the cork and vinyl from drying out before it can be used? Um, that's a really great question. I've not personally have had a problem, but I live in Chicago and I've never been to Arizona, so I'm, it seems like it would be a hot, dry climate. If you have any ideas on that question, let us know in the comments and Danny will uh, look out for that to hopefully post it on the screen. Diana says, what's the best way to tighten Chicago screws? I'm having an issue with the bottom piece turning along with the top, even though I'm trying to hold it in place. Um, you know what, I've never had that issue before. Danny, do you have any thoughts? Uh, turning on top? It's a, a sort of like a flat piece. Think of a, a rivet on one side and a Phillips head screw on the other side. And you need something to hold it? Maybe like yeah. a clamp or a grip of some sort? Or hmm. like a vice grip? I'm not sure. I'm guessing someone watching might know. So um, again, just as before, if you have an idea for Diana's question, go ahead and type it in the comments and Danny uh, will look out for it to post it on the screen. Michelle says, um, hi, Sarah and Danny from Okinawa, Japan. Do you like seam rollers? Are they really useful? I actually, I don't have it on the desk right now, but I use the Violet Craft seam roller, which we also saw on the website. I love using it for 
keeping by my sewing machine if I'm working on a quilt block rather than getting up and going to the ironing board every single time when I need to press a seam. Using the seam roller, I use the seam roller for foundation paper piecing. I don't use it as much for bag making, but I suppose if you were working on maybe a smaller project that you were assembly line, assembly line making, like if you were making a lot of them at once um, and wanted to use a seam roller, especially for line, for maybe pressing smaller pieces or lining pieces, but I do mostly use uh, seam rollers for uh, quilt making. Marie says, maybe her Chicago screws are too long. Hmm, that's a thought. Um, Angela says, if you look for an antique ironing board, it has holes for hooks or dowels to use as a pegboard or hang S hooks. Oh, that's a great idea as well. Tony says, have you heard of Piecing It Real? It's a foundation paper piecing class or club. I don't think I have, but I'm going to write that down and check it out after the show. Danny, was it Piecing For Real? Uh, yeah, Piecing It <laughs> Piecing it real. Piecing it real, thank you. Uh, Joyce said, off the wall quilt sells portable design, portable wall design boards. They have various sizes. Thank you for that, Joyce. I'll check that out too. Okay, Blue Diva says, thread Loctite, uh, go for the blue variety. This will fix your Chicago screws to stop them coming loose. It's like almost like a glue to keep it from mm, unthreading. Mm, mm, mm. Um, Donna says, use nylon pliers to hold the rivet side. Thank you for that, Donna. Sarah, I use a quilt stand that is easily assembled with a flannel backed tablecloth for a design wall. Then I roll the tablecloth till next time. Oh, that sounds pretty simple and doable. Barbara says, you might need a spacer for the Chicago screws. Sounds like maybe it's not uh, tight enough. I've had that happen to me in the past, uh, purchasing the wrong size. Um, Linda says, I bought a six foot by six foot bam bamboo shade. I attached it above the closet door, um, then put the batting on it. When I don't need it, I can pull the cords and roll it up. That is fantastic, and that really takes up no space at all. Really great idea. I'm gonna write that down. Bamboo shade. Terry says, use a piece of rubber non-skid mat to hold the Chicago screw piece, for example, shelf liner. Fantastic. I knew you guys would have the answer to those uh, two questions. Thank you. Marilyn says, desert in Arizona question. I live in Arizona desert too and no problem with cork drying out if inside. Thank you, Marilyn. I appreciate you. Maureen says, I'm curious to know what you like about your Kai scissors compared to other brands. That's a really great question. So I use... Kai number 7205 scissors. I like how smooth that they open and close. They don't feel, um, my initial sewing scissors were gingers and they were metal and for whatever reason, they created a lot of soreness in my hand from opening and closing. Um, I'm not sure if it was more because of the weight or just because of how they opened and closed, but these are just really smooth. In my opinion, a lot of sewing scissors cut really well and are sharp, but um, the comfort that I feel in my hand, and I, I do like the, I don't know if these are considered uh, rubber or just plastic, but I like how this feels in my hand as well, opposed to metal. So maybe it's just personal preference, but there's a lot of features of this particular number of scissor that um, I really enjoy. Terry says, Chicago screws use a rubber glove or jar lid turner to hold a Chicago screw bottom. Fantastic. Thank you, Terry. Sally says, Sarah, have you ever used flannel on shower hooks? You can use your window curtain rod and roll it up for easy storage. That's another great idea. Thank you. This sounds like so many ideas for uh, design walls for quilt blocks that don't take up a lot of space. So thank you for all of the suggestions. Are you calling it on the questions, Danny? Yep. Wow, I feel like tonight's show really flew by. I, I feel like that happens with a lot of the Social Sunday shows. So um, thank you for making it enjoyable uh, for me as a presenter. I really appreciate that. Um, I had a lot of fun tonight. Um, I will be back again next Sunday answering questions live. Danny will be joining me on that show. And then next Sunday will be another segment of Bag Lab. So uh, one more thing to get to for this show, and that's the giveaway. So I've decided to give away another $50 gift certificate to my website, sellsweetness.com. Um, 
how the giveaways work is uh, we compile all of the comments for this particular show, Facebook and YouTube together. You have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show and I have um, an extra question that you can answer in the comments uh, for an extra method of entry. My question is, do you collect anything? So I'm sure a lot of you collect uh, fabric, um, but if there's anything else that you collect, uh, let me know in the comments. Maybe it's stamps, coins, uh, teacups. Let me know. I, I'll be looking forward to seeing um, what collections people have. So thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I hope you have a fantastic week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody. Thank you.